Death's Door is a game by Acid Nerf and published by Devolver Digital and honestly one of the most interesting games I've played this year. It first came out for PC and Xbox, but is now available on PlayStation and the Nintendo Switch. In addition, it's gotten some quality of life updates such as UI fixes. Hey guys, Juhuti here and I just played Death's Door, Juhuti Gaming Review. So Death's Door is basically a crossover between a Souls game those old school isometric viewed Zelda games and thus also a Metroidvania style game. If one of those genres is not to your taste, do not worry, because Death's Door is one of those games that brings all of these in a light form, and therefore it's accessible to people who normally shy away from a harder challenge. So without further ado, please enjoy my review. In Death's Door, you play as a crew whose occupation is a reaper, meaning his office tasks you to collect the souls of individuals whose time has come to move on. On a mission, something goes wrong and the scope of completing your task becomes bigger. It's not a deep story per se, but it's good enough and has some surprises, so I don't want to spoil it. In this world, you also come across interesting characters. You don't necessarily spend a lot of time with them, but they do a good job of leaving a lasting impression on you. For example, Pothead, who is, well, a guy with a pot as a head. This guy is just golden, and you can see that the devs poured a lot of heart into creating and writing these characters. Even the bosses, for the most part, have personality, aside from being a challenge. And with that, let's talk about the combat and gameplay. You'll be traversing a bleak world in search of souls, in a metroidvania style, but light. If you don't know what that means, it's a style of having an interconnected world that in the beginning you can only explore a small portion of, but as you acquire new weapons and abilities, you gain access to more of the world, and if you keep a keen eye out, you can even find secret areas that award you with extras that make your life a bit easier. Combat is slightly challenging. You start off with a sword, but then also get access to other melee based weapons, such as a hammer and dual wielding daggers. I used the latter, personally, a bit, but ended up sticking with the base sword. The game's various weapons are more of a choice to complement your playstyle and not something you constantly cycle through. They like to keep it simple. You also start off with a bow that refills true melee attacks, which in my opinion is a really nice design choice since it forces you to go in instead of always hanging back. There are also some spells you can obtain, but I won't spoil these. All in all, all these tools can also help you with some light puzzle solving and also expand where you can go in the world. The bosses and mid-bosses are not too hard, but you will definitely die to some a couple of times. Overall, the game's combat difficulty isn't as hard, so as I said previously, a soul's light. To make things even simple, the game utilizes a cross between the bonfire system and the traditional checkpoint system. It means there are no frequent checkpoints you can create, but dying only makes you lose the progress you made since that checkpoint, and not losing all your souls like in the Souls-like game. Speaking of souls, you can also use them by traveling back to the hub world to level up different attributes to make your life a bit easier. Though having simple visuals, Death's Door art style shines brightly true, and this although the world is presented as bleak and desolate. This simple art style approach means that on every platform, it should also be able to run smoothly, and also age with grace as the years pass by. There are little touches as well, such as when your character finds a new item which harkens back to the old Zelda games, and that I find is a very nice touch. Overall, Death's Door is well worth your time. It's not a very long game, I beat it in just over 7 hours. I should also mention, however, that I didn't go too much off the beaten path. With doing everything, maybe an additional 3-5 to five hours are there for you. Either way, at $20 or your region's equivalent, it won't break your bank. It's a light game that allows you to sit back and enjoy it, and the world Acid Nerf has created. 
It is also helped now that it is available on all systems. So I fully recommend this game with all of my heart and hope we see more interesting stuff from Acid Nerf. Anyways, thanks for watching this review till to the end. Consider subscribing to the Juhuti Gaming channel to get my latest reviews and other content as they come out. This is your boy Juhuti and I'll see you on the next I Just Played review.